Men, 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 manly men, men, be a man. Hi, I'm Bobby Angel with Ascension Presents. Today I'd like to talk about raising young men, uh, raising up good men. Disclaimer, my son is two and a half years old, so I'm not there yet. Ever since I got out of youth ministry, I've been working at an all-boys uh, high school for almost a decade now, uh, so I still know nothing. But I collaborated with a number of friends who've got stellar um, young men, young teenage boys, to just kind of figure out, like, what are some of the common um, denominators you've seen to help young boys become really good uh, faithful men. Number one, monkey see, monkey do. We have to first of all look in the mirror and say, how am I behaving? How am I speaking about others? How do I talk when I'm driving and in traffic? What TV shows and media am I allowing into the home? How am I talking to my spouse, to my significant other, to coworkers? Because they're picking up everything we say and everything we do. So first of all, check ourselves here. And even in the faith, am, am I putting uh, worship and prayer at any level of priority in my life because if dad's not going to church, if dad's not going to mass, why should I? The example of the father is so key to helping uh, children, boys and girls, participate in the faith. There's a lot of men that, again, they haven't fallen in love with God. They haven't really encountered Jesus. And so why should he be a priority in life? But if, if we're going to be the change, we've got to, first of all, model the importance of God, the importance of stopping for prayer, uh, doing the rosary when we can so that our young men see that as well. Anything that, again, can be jumped off, they will jump off of it. We want to see, am I strong enough? Am I man enough? We want to exercise our dominion in a healthy way. And that comes from, again, pushing the boundaries. And so to encourage young boys not to, again, be, be dumb, like idiotic, and, and take unnecessary risks, but instead of saying, be careful, say, pay attention. Say, you can do this. It's been documented already, the negative effects of helicoptering, of trying to remove all obstacles out of our children's lives. And especially, again, for men, we have to learn how to fail. We have to learn that not everything's going to go our way. And we have to learn how to adapt ourselves because otherwise we become conditioned that our parents are just going to do everything for us. And so one of the things you can do to help your sons is allow them to fail, allow them to skin a knee allow them to to get an F and be like, all right, you don't have to like it. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to change here? We'll go on walks around the neighborhood and we have this big wagon and my son refuses to ride in the wagon. He, he wants to pull it himself. Now he's two and a half and it takes five times as long to do this walk if he's walking outside carrying it than if he would just sit in the wagon. He's two and a half and he wants to exert some dominance and show like, no, I'm strong enough to do this. And along too, like wrestling with your kids, the importance of, of play and the importance of wasting time with them. Like, I love you enough to waste time with you. And yeah, I, I get it. We all have stuff we've got to do. We all have emails and different tasks. But the importance of stopping what we're doing and playing with our kids and saying, you know what? You are worth spending and wasting time with. That goes such a long way in the mind of a child. The other day, my, my daughter was like, you know, my favorite days are Fridays because it's pizza and Saturdays because daddy's home. I'm like, okay, that's so great. When we are present to our kids, it makes all the difference in the world. And in Paul's letter to Timothy, he says in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1 there, treat younger men like brothers. And that's what I try to do at the all-boys school I work at is I, don't, I try not to talk to them as boys, as seventh grade boys, but it's like you are young men. You are on the road to manhood and you're testing boundaries and you're trying to figure out what you're about. And I want to encourage you on that. Be wary too of, as parents, Sometimes we're trying to replay our, the highlights of our lives through our kids. Or again, we're trying to use our kids as trophies. Look at what school my son got into and look at how he did in sports. And somehow it's a reflection on us. You know, they are their own quirky, weird, unique, individual person. They're going to take a different path than maybe we would have anticipated. And to support them in that and to watch our own vanity, to watch our own desire to try to live vicariously through our kids. Okay, another point that's needed for helping our young men flourish is fraternity. They need other men. They need genuine friendships. Again, easier said than done because we're often limited geographically, maybe by who's in the neighborhood or who's not in the neighborhood. Sometimes we don't have a whole lot of control over that, but it's important for them to see healthy fraternity and engage in healthy friendships because... We gravitate to that in a positive way or a negative way. And you've got, again, 
fraternal gangs and you've got destructive avenues where that manifests itself as well as again areas where it is healthy areas where it is uh, supportive and life-giving and so one way or not we need the company of other men so as parents too I think we have a responsibility to show them what again healthy male friendship looks like one that's not just based on sports and insults and tearing each other down but what does it look like to pray together what does it look like to do service together there is a this affirmation like you are good in who you are you're like your your worth is not based on your sat score on how you did in the big game but your worth is who you are as a young man and that is something i see time and time again as we wrap ourselves up as men in my how am i succeeding or how am i failing and young boys especially need to hear that from uh other men like you are good because you are and you exist and we're all going to screw up we're all going to fail we're all going to fall short but it is good that you exist and you have what it takes because the devil will screw with us so much so much when it comes to our sin and be like you are a horrible man because of this you are a horrible person because you did this or you fell into this sin we are not our sin okay but young men like we internalize a lot of that we're not as good about talking about our thoughts and our feelings and what's going on and processing this so It'll manifest itself in destructive ways or we will just withdraw, period. There's so much healing that comes in the company of other men when they're able to be with one another and say, again, no, you are good because you are. And we all are weird and we all have quirks and that's what makes us who we are. And we're all going to fail. But the point is there's a brotherhood around you that's going to support you and walk with you on the way. The last thing I'll say too is, is that St. Um, John Henry Newman said that the youth need a masculine religion. And so many men fall away from Christianity because they don't see it as a religion with teeth. They don't see it as a religion of strength. They don't see it, uh, they don't see Christ as a savior who is a man. Um, they see the elements of the faith in, in just a nice, wishy washy kind of way. And no guy wants to be nice. We want to be strong. We want to be bold. We want to go on the adventure. We want to lay our life down. That's the, the deeper call of a man. And so we need to be able to portray the, the Catholic Christian faith in, in a manner of strength, in a manner of um, boldness. To look at the lives of the saints, of St. Saint Paul, Maximilian Kolbe, of John Paul II, all these saints who were men, lived very different lives, but were all like dudes. Like they were athletic, they used their creative gifts. They need to see the, the saintly, manly models. They need to see us also like being willing to drop to our knees and do the rosary and say, no, no, it's time for mass. This is non-negotiable. Um, they need to see a faith that has strength to it if they're ever going to emulate it. Let's look inwardly and say, how can we better model uh, this Christian faith in a life-giving way, in a way that is attractive to men? because that will make the difference when it comes to the church, to vocations, to healthy marriages. At the end of it all, pray for the wisdom, God, how do you want me to model this faith? And then how, help me to put into action, period, end of story. Help me in my prioritizing and what I'm, I'm allowing into the house in terms of media, in, in how I'm speaking, in how I'm modeling, again, the faith to my son and help me to take action on that. And God, again, is going to bless the work we have in front of us. Let's continue the conversation, keep praying for one another, um, add comments, add suggestions below about resources that may have helped you, your son, or other young men out. From all of us at Ascension Presents, God bless.